Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. I'm in jail now. I got arrested for having no front license plate on my car. I don't remember that being a law these days, but okay. Mrs. Puff is the character that greenlit SpongeBob SquarePants in the first place, having SpongeBob ride the line between being an adult and a kid. So of course, that makes Mrs. Puff an important character in the show. She goes to jail a lot. Doing Time is the episode where Mrs. Puff gets arrested after Spongebob causes damage during his driving test and Spongebob and Patrick try to break her out. Like Murray Man and Barnacle Boy 4, this episode aired on January 21st, 2002 and while this episode has the most screen time of Mrs. Puff in jail, this is the third episode where she was arrested. The first two being episodes 14, Hall Monitor from Season 1 and the second being episode 59, No Free Rides from Season 2. Albeit she was only shown in jail at the very end of both episodes, but still. This episode is notorious for the fact that it's basically a showcase of a recursion, a never-ending cycle, always showing Mrs. Puff screaming while Spongebob is failing his driving test, falling down the void. But it's also for that reason that this episode's ending confused me a little bit as a kid. So with that context, does that make this a bad episode? Well, the only way to find out is to watch it. Oh wow, how convenient. My portable DVD player and my DVD binder with the exact disc I need are both here. That's awfully nice of the guards. So the episode starts up and Spongebob is taking the boating exam again and destroys the whole boating school in the process. Even after the test is over, Spongebob still drove recklessly trying to pass. He drove through a melon stand and knocked down a house that was nearby some police who started chasing after him since he had no front license plate. Been there. They drove off an unfinished bridge, and Mrs. Puff wondered where she went wrong. A flashback shows that when she opened her boating school, she would teach any student who was willing to learn, and Spongebob happened to be her first student. Back in reality, the police followed them off the cliff, and Spongebob and Mrs. Puff crashed into a fruit punch truck outside of Shady Shoals retirement home. And so did the other cop cars, and the fruit punch flooded the retirement home. The police spoke to them, and despite Spongebob being responsible for the damage, Mrs. Puff was arrested for all of Spongebob's doings. Mrs. Puff tried to think of some positives to get her through her jail sentence, and quickly found out that the biggest positive was that she didn't have to deal with Spongebob and all the chaos he causes. Until she gets out of jail again. The next day, Spongebob went to school despite it being abandoned and felt extremely guilty for getting Mrs. Puff arrested. He talks to Patrick, who didn't help much, but Spongebob got the idea to break Mrs. Puff out of jail. So he and Patrick tried robbing the first nautical bank, but they didn't rob the bank very well and nobody took them seriously, especially not the bank teller. After that attempt failed, Spongebob realized what they were supposed to be doing. They disguised themselves as rocks and made it into jail while everybody was smashing rocks as labor. They tried talking to Mrs. Puff, but she was not happy to see them. A guard thought she was hallucinating, so he took her on kitchen duty and Spongebob and Patrick got smashed by another inmate. Later, Mrs. Puff tried to serve chili to an inmate called Donna, but Spongebob appeared again. Why can't this jail be more like the Bikini Bottom Jail? Mrs. Puff refused to go with them because she was liking being in prison with the other inmates. Spongebob thought she was institutionalized and tried to convince her to come with them instead. Mrs. Puff still didn't want to go, but the guard saw her scream at the vat and not the sponge and starfish, so he dismissed her back to her cell. Later on, Mrs. Puff saw Spongebob and Patrick show up a few more times, but every time she called the guard, he didn't believe they were actually there. Spongebob and Patrick even showed up disguised as guards, which scared Mrs. Puff, so they left and then the real guards showed up. Mrs. Puff thought they were still Spongebob and Patrick, but when she was proven wrong, she was thrown into solitary confinement. She tried to look at the positives again and said she was finally away from Spongebob and Patrick. Why can't more people see the positives like Mrs. Puff? Look at me for example. I may be in jail right now, but I still have my favorite show and not the bane of my existence. But then she sees Spongebob's laughing face all around her and screamed in horror which caused her to be backed in the boat right before it crashes into the fruit punch truck again. After the punch spills out, the police come and take Spongebob away this time, much to Mrs. Puff's relief, thinking her jail sentence was just a dream. But then a police officer told her that she already did her time, and she saw herself in a striped outfit with a ball chain. What happened to her previous uniform? 
She screamed and ended up in the free falling boat again, this time with Donna. So she screamed again, was back with Spongebob, gave up when she realized she was in a loop, and the episode ends. <sighs> okay. So that was doing time. And I would say that's a fine enough episode. There's nothing in here that I just can't get over these days, like the violence scene in the previous episode. This one has a lot more lines and sequences that I like going back to more often. When I was young, my favorite sequence was how insane and frantic Spongebob was driving at the beginning, leading to the free fall from the unfinished bridge. I still love that scene today. It's pretty good. Hey, what do you got against the melons? I also love the part where the punch floods the retirement home and how Fred doesn't give a sh in this shot here. As sad as it is when the punch turns this guy's white paper with a red ink memoir written on it into red paper, I think the delivery of his line from the voice actor is what did it for me. Oh, SpongeBob and Patrick's first couple attempts to bring Mrs. Puff out of jail are funny. I love how only SpongeBob talks when they're disguised as rocks and when they get broken by another lady at the end of that scene. No way! There goes our deposit on these costumes. And of course, the scene where they can't rob the bank is hilarious. I love how they have socks on instead of ski masks and how everybody in the background just doesn't give a f Going back to the chaos scene at the beginning, these days my favorite gag is when the police use their clubs to straighten out the parking meter followed by Spongebob knocking over the house. And the scene where they drive off the unfinished bridge is hysterical. The way Spongebob and Patrick try to break Mrs. Puff out of jail are pretty funny. And although I thought Donna was just a guy with long hair as a kid, and honestly, I didn't know Donna was a girl until I saw the Spongebob wiki after his latest rewatch. Donna's presence as a whole is funny, especially her line at the end. So what's for dinner tonight, Puff Mama Chili? I also like when Mrs. Puff says she likes the prisoners, followed by the freeze frame showing how funny the prisoners look. In addition to that, there are some fun character moments here too. All the exchanges between the cops are funny, I like when Mrs. Puff tries to explain to the cops that Spongebob was a student driver before she herself gets arrested. I love when Patrick immediately agrees to help Spongebob break Mrs. Puff out of jail and when they're robbing the bank and when Spongebob feels guilty about getting Mrs. Puff in trouble. Now I've heard some people say that Mrs. Puff was kind of being tortured by Spongebob and Patrick constantly trying to break her out of jail. And well, I can see where you're coming from there. She did say she didn't want to come, and Patrick of all characters was the one to realize Mrs. Puff was being serious, but in all honesty, I can't entirely blame Spongebob for wanting to get Mrs. Puff out of jail and continuously trying to. It was his fault she ended up there in the first place, and even if Mrs. Puff felt happier being in jail away from Spongebob, she was eventually going to be released from jail anyway. This was just some time to rest and recover from him. So I understand if it feels like they won't leave her alone, but on the other hand, they also don't grab her and force her to come with them either, so it's not all bad. But I do understand those who feel sorry for Mrs. Puff here. And I do too at times, mostly when she ends up in solitary confinement and starts hallucinating Spongebob's face in her room. That's kinda disturbing. It sorta of creeped me out as a kid, and today I still think it's wrong. Speaking of which, Let's talk about what I addressed earlier. The fact that this episode loops over and over with Mrs. Puff screaming and finding herself in a free fall. This scene was pretty confusing to me as a kid, and it's overall a weird ending. During the free fall, Mrs. Puff was screaming her head off and her life was flashing before her eyes. I can see how something like that can cause her to have terrors or hallucinate. She is falling from the sky, basically. Dude! We're falling right out of the sky! The events of this episode could be considered a dream or a hallucination as a result of her falling from the sky while Spongebob is unfazed. That does make some sense, but she does end up screaming a lot and it keeps cutting back to the free fall with the police behind her. They all could just be dreams after all, or she is so used to Spongebob's bad driving that she's expecting the outcome. As a kid, my theory was that after she started screaming over the confinement room, she was released from jail off screen and Spongebob failed his test again in the same way at the beginning. 
And then when she screams here, the part with Donna in the boat with her was the only actual hallucination, since it then fades back to her with Spongebob. But that was something I thought of after the third time I watched it. The first two times I didn't think much of the ending since I was really young at that time. Honestly, this just feels like something where the more you dive into it, the more confusing it becomes. I get that it's all about how incompetent of a driver Spongebob is, but this also feels like an indirect foreshadowing of the later years where Mrs. Puff goes absolutely crazy. But that doesn't make sense either since season 3 was going to be the final season before the Spongebob Squarepants movie brought the show to its peak and Nickelodeon became greedy. Well, I'll say that if this is a result of Mrs. Puff becoming more and more crazy when the later years come, then I feel bad for her throughout the whole episode instead of just the last 2 to 3 minutes or so. If that's the case, that would explain why the guard never noticed Spongebob and Patrick during these two shots right here and treated them like nothing. Literally. But I think just for the sake of simplicity and to keep my head from exploding, I'll just stick with my thrown together childhood theory and say that everything was real except for the part with Donna in the boat. Alright, quick fun facts. While Spongebob usually drives a boat with a red stripe on it when he crashes, this time the stripe is blue. This episode and its sister episode both have a line mentioning the president in some way. The year was 1911-12. Why, I believe the president did Just was... the police. I wonder if the president's in town. And that's about it. I think this episode is fine with a lot of funny sequences throughout. While the ending does bring it down a few points for me, it's not enough to ruin it. Now the Spongebob confinement room, yeah, that's my least favorite scene in the episode, hands down and I pray for Mrs. Puff's sanity. As confusing as the ending is, there's a lot more in this episode I do like, so I'll just say fine and move on. Doing Time is a decent episode. There's a lot of funny scenes and great gags in this one. And while the ending is funny, I won't deny that, it's just one of those things that makes less and less sense the more you think about it, and it becomes a bit of a brain twister, not gonna lie. But other than that, I still can't get over Spongebob laughing in the solitary confinement room. Aw oh, man, it's back! Uh, uh, <gasps> oh, thank god. That was just a dream. Wait, why am I dressed like this? It's not Halloween. That explains it.